What's the matter, Dane? What's the matter, big boy? He's barking at something. It's all right, bud. Here comes Zoe. She'll tell you. It's all right. Hey, I want to show you what I'm into. I don't know what Dune's barking at out there, but to show you what we got in the shop here, uh, a buddy of mine moves these buildings. Now, this thing with uh, the, the prefabricated buildings, I'm sure you've seen these. Uh, companies build these prefabricated sheds and buildings of different types, and they're special trailers that these building movers use to move these buildings around, and these trailers are really, really cool. Uh, they're very capable. They're kind of like a rollback combined with a trailer, combined with, a, well, they've got a few features that I've never seen on anything else. But what these, what these trailers are capable of doing that these guys move these buildings with, they're just really cool. Um, I guess there's no point in saying any more about that than, than I have because you can look that up yourself. Pine Hill is the company that built the trailer that we're going to be working on a part for here today. My buddy's got a Pine Hill trailer. He's been using it for a long time. Uh, the fact that this part, this part needs work is definitely nothing against Pine Hill because I'm sure he's overloaded it and done all kind of shit with it he wasn't supposed to do. And uh, that's just the way things go with equipment. You know, once a guy starts figuring out what he can and can't do, sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll do what you got to do uh, to get a job done. And this trailer, I know, has moved a bunch of buildings. It's moved and set a bunch of buildings. So uh, let me show you what we're looking at. This is the tongue, and this is the tongue of the trailer. And obviously, you can see there's quite a bow in it. You know, she's been, she's took a load. And, and the, the trick with the tongue of these trailers uh, they go in and out. There's a hydraulic cylinder that mounts on, you know, to be mounted on right here. And then the other side of the hydraulic cylinder would be mounted on the trailer. And he can extend and retract this to change the length of the trailer. Um, there's a series of holes to where when he gets it to the length he wants, he'll drop a pin in it so that there's something holding it besides just the cylinder. Um, these plates that you see right here, those are patches that uh, he's put on because it was starting to break. And uh, what he told me, he told me that every time he saw it starting to crack, it was cracking. The crack was starting at one of those holes. So one of the ideas that he had about uh, rebuilding this thing is he said, you know, if I just drop the pin in from the top down, I wouldn't really need the bottom hole. And that crack's coming from the bottom hole. So maybe it'd be stronger if we don't put the hole in the bottom. Uh, and I can see that that makes some sense. But now I've got to looking at this thing. This is the top. And it's doing the same thing. The, the crack, you see this crack right here, it's coming from the top. So does it matter if, if it's got a hole all the way through it, top to bottom? I don't know. I mean, obviously, you're going to crack the bottom first. But seeing the crack we see in the top here just pretty much shows us that it's going to crack from the hole because the hole is a place where steel is missing. It's the weakest place in the tube. If you compare this place with a hole to this place with no hole, this is going to be weaker. There's metal missing. Uh, and I want to show you one of the tricks that the manufacturer has done to make this. Let me get a light. Make this tube a little stronger than it is. See, the way these are made, running all the way through there, 
there's a couple of half inch plates inside of there and you know they go I, I stuck a rod in there to see how far they go and they go clear up to about right here and once you get in here for any further that way you don't really need it because look under here see it's it's got an extra plate here that comes all the way back and um and that's fine this could even come back farther because obviously it doesn't extend in any further than here where the hydraulic cylinder mounts on so uh you know it wouldn't wouldn't make any difference what you put on the side or the bottom from here forward uh, but you can't have anything on the outside of it out here because it'll, it'll stop it from going in. And when he put these patches on here, see, once he put those patches on the outside, he couldn't retract it any further than there. He, could, he just, he, he restricted himself by doing that. He had to do it, you know, to fix it, to keep going. But he lost the ability to retract it as far as it was made to retract. So what are we going to do about it? Well... Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff on his trailer tongue that I'll be cutting off and welding on the new one. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with the part the hitch bolts to. There's nothing wrong with the part that these chains, safety chains bolt to. I can cut those off and put them over on the other. This bracket that the hydraulic cylinder mounts to, cut that right off, take a measurement, put it on the new one. But... Uh, what are we going to do about the new one? Like, how are we going to fabricate it? I'll, uh, I'll tell you one thing we decided right off. Uh, this has half-inch plates in it, and we're going to be using... Uh, uh, the bars we're going to use are three-quarter. And I've already cut those to length. Um, and he had mentioned, like I said, just putting the hole in the top and not dropping the pin all the way through. We, I, I've changed... I've changed that plan because I am going to drop the pin all the way through and I've already drilled holes in both sides of this tube where I want it. And if you notice those holes are extra big, well, I'll tell you what my plan is. Uh, instead of just having a hole in the tube, I'm going to sleeve it. And I would like to have this sleeve inside of that tube and weld that sleeve solid to the tube. See, that's going to be way, way stronger than just having a hole in the tube. And the critical thing is, this has to line up perfectly with those holes. So I'll tell you how I'm going to do that. These are longer than they need to be. The hole is as big as the outside diameter of the pipe. So I'm sticking that through there like that, even though the pin only needs to fit on the inside of this. But here's how I'm assembling it. I'm going to put all of these sleeves in this tube and make sure that they're all the way through the holes I've drilled. See, that's going through here. And then it's going through, clear down to the table. And I've got these cut, so I've got four inches left. So now I'm going to take these flat bars, and I'm going to stand the flat bar up right beside here, on this side and on this side, and I'm going to tack those flat bars to these sleeves. One on each side. See where I'm going with this? Once that's tacked up, I'm going to pull this assembly with the two flat bars and all these pipes. I'm going to pull it up out of there. I'm going to lay it down. And this pipe that's in the tube right now will be sticking out. I'm going to cut that off. Then I'm going to take that assembly. I'm going to slide it inside of this tube. I'm going to line it up with the holes. And I'm going to weld all the way around each one of these. Weld around the sleeve and weld the sleeve to the tube. So that's next.
Once I assembled this, I got a measurement on the width of this. And then I came over here and I took a look at where I would want to drill a couple more holes for the purpose of plug welding. And so what these two holes will be is I'll be plug welding here and here to the top of this flat bar. And it'll be on each side of that sleeve that I'm putting in there. And of course I'm welding around the sleeve too. So with all of that done, uh, I still have to drill the 9 16 holes in the other side. But once those 9 16 holes are drilled in the other side and that bar is put in there and they're plug welded, then your bar is going to be plug welded top and bottom in each side, which will make, you know, uh, it, that ties this in at every hole, which, you know, is going to make this a lot stronger uh, as far as avoiding... Uh, this bow effect that we've got with this one and also with those holes the three holes welded in a row like that i think we can eliminate this cracking that comes from the hole outward because that's really going to strengthen that up i got the other side of this tube drilled that's all the drilling uh for the to to plug weld the holes to the flat bars and to uh, weld around those sleeves one thing i'm going to mention i made this as a replacement for this piece and this is one piece that this piece in here is one piece that i'm not going to try to reuse i made another one so uh I, the reason i went in and did this though i'm going to tumble this in my cement mixer full of nails and see if it can really smooth it out nice because the purpose of this right here is to run wires through so i want to try to see if i can if those nails will round everything off real nice like it usually does so this uh this doesn't have any burrs that would hurt those wires uh while that's tumbling of course i can assemble this and see how that goes i think i'm finally done making holes okay we got there's four holes in each end that just serve to plug weld the ends of our flat bar. Then there's these series of holes where we're going to plug weld our sleeve. And on each side of our sleeve to the flat bar, like this, five sets of those. And then on the other end here, the four holes that are going to be it's here on this flat bar and I'm ready to put that thing together and see how that goes.
that went in there nice and everything looks good um, I could tell by looking at the top and the bottom that it's all doable but I think the way this is gonna go like this one's just a this one this sleeve is it needs to go away from me just a little bit like right there it's perfect And I think each one is going to need, see that one is, that one needs to come back. But I think they're just going to be that way where I need to go down through here tacking them. And I'll just like this one, you know, I need to take the screwdriver and get it just perfect and put a tack on it. And then, you know, that one will stay and then I can go to the next one and, and I can keep moving down the line this one here needs to come this way a little bit but it's you know it's no problem to pull it but the way the only way I'm gonna get it to stay is if I go down through here tacking so we're good on this it's just gonna be going down through there tacking it up so I'm gonna do that Real quick to mention a few points on the welding. Uh, what I've been doing is welding the sleeve to the tube. Uh, the reason that I'm welding the sleeve to the tube first pretty much is because it's going to be done on a completely different heat as when I, as when I plug weld these holes. When I plug weld them holes, I'll really be... Uh, cranking it up you know and and running a lot more heat obviously what's behind there when i weld those holes is a hunk of a three quarter inch thick four inch wide flat bar sitting there so that's something you're really going to lay the smoke to it you're not going to you're not going to weld that hot on those pipe sleeves but uh what i wanted to mention too i've welded these pipe sleeves in here and i get a little bit of weld in the hole where uh, the three-quarter pin doesn't go through there and I've been working on these where uh, I got them so that the pins they all get the, the three-quarter inch pin goes through here nice so that's no problem and what the what I used on that I used this uh, Makita cordless high speed uh, with a burr bit and that worked really good and there's actually more technique to this than you think because you don't want to take off more material than you need to uh, you kind of got to get a feel for it when you stick it in there and you're moving it around you'll feel a lump Usually it's where you started welding. You always have like a bump where you start welding. Uh, and, you know, you as you go around in a round hole with a round tool, the parts of it that may stick out into the center of the hole more are parts that you'll feel with the tool. So instead of just sticking it in there and going around and around and around, you need to stick it in there follow around and feel for those lumps and when you find a lump work the lump down until you can take that round tool and just you know feel that you have rounded that and there's no longer the bump there and i got this out and didn't use it but i'll mention it anyway this is this is called a car reamer um these are good for cleaning out holes or making a hole slightly larger you'd put this in a in a in a drill this has got a half inch shank and you you know you would but i, I ended up not using that um generally what i've used this for the most is when i've been out in the field and i needed to make a hole in a hurry and i made a hole with my torch and I made what to make it as nice as I could I would make the hole just slightly smaller than it needed to be and then put this in a drill and clean it out one time 
to to make it basically as close as I could get it to a to a drilled hole uh, in the field in a hurry, but not a drilled hole, just a torched out hole and a cleaned up hole with a reamer. Uh, but of course, there's plenty of uses for this. So I'm going to get back to work on uh, welding this up, and I'm going to crank my machine up high and plug weld these holes. So that's next. We got all these plug welds done. I'm gonna be hitting these with a grinder to make sure it's flat. You know, this has got to slide into another piece so we don't want any bumps. One thing about the way I welded this, I, I used the Millermatic that I've got the uh, the 030 diameter wire in. There's 030 in this one and 035 in that one. The 030 I feel like digs down into a hole like that a little bit better. Either one would work. But I was pretty pretty high on the heat for 030. I was at 22.6 volts and 400 inches a minute of that wire. So I'm going to grind these off now and working on something really struggles to turn it over. Uh, you know, grabbing something like this tube by, by hand and trying to open it, it's really tough. You get a hold of it with something. I want to turn this, get some leverage, control it. Well, the structure of this tube's all welded up. So the next thing obviously is the parts on this old one that I'm going to use, I'm going to start cutting those off. I'm going to carbon arc those pieces off. Uh, one thing I found that was interesting is that bolt's loose. Um, I might take this off of this. I might take the hitch off of that. Uh, off of that hitch bracket. I wouldn't necessarily have to, but... I'm probably going to have an issue cutting that weld with that bolt head there anyway. So, one of the things that I did uh, before beforehand is I've looked where and measured where all, all the things are, and I went ahead and laid the other tube out. I've went ahead and marked it, and I know where everything's going to go uh, before I even take it off. Uh, this is for the jack, safety chains, this piece where the wires go through. Obviously, this needs transferred over there. This is for the hydraulic cylinder. I've got marked on there where it goes. And then back here, 
there's a bracket for the track. There's a track that contains wires where the wires fold up when this thing telescopes in and out. And what I see with it, the bracket, uh, there's about three eighths of an inch here, you know, behind that. Uh, and then it sets down on bottom. So that makes this pretty simple. When I, when I position that here, I'll just put a three eighths there and clamp that piece on with that much sticking out. So I think it's time to cut this part. That bolt in the hitch, the one that was loose, I just got that out of there. And uh, it took some doing. And I decided on this next one, I'm going to shoot some footage of it. Here's the bolt I took out. And when I say it took some doing, uh, it was tight. I, I, put a, I put an air gun and a crescent wrench on it. And even with a pretty good crescent wrench, it was trying to roll the head of that bolt. My, my, my impact gun, on turning, it, turning the nut on this side, was turning with enough force that a crescent wrench wouldn't hold this in. So I went and got a box end wrench and put on it. I put the box end on this bolt side. That held it, but my half inch impact gun would not turn that nut. Next thing, heat the nut. Now these are elastic stop nuts, and I guess I should tell you that once you heat these, it's not an elastic stop nut anymore but it's still a nut uh you can put a lock washer on it you could screw it on there and tack it there's plenty of things you could do to reuse this nut now you're going to have people that'll say why would you reuse that bolt just get another bolt okay fine if you got another bolt right there handy use the other bolt but look i've repurposed bolts repeatedly and not had a major issue with any of them I had a buddy here this weekend that had three trailer hitches with hitch balls. And, uh, the, the, the hitch balls were stuck in the hitch. And we used a torch to get those out. And we were talking about that. Yeah, you know, you can pay 20 bucks, but uh, get, a, get a new ball for 20 bucks. But you still got to get that ball out to reuse the hitch or you're going to have to throw the hitch away too. And if you got three of them that are stuck and you go you know with a torch in a little bit of no time we saved sixty dollars worth of balls hitch balls and we probably saved another sixty or a hundred dollars worth of hitches and in the case with these bolts when you're taking something apart if you can put it back together with those bolts you don't have to go get that so it's something to consider like that's why i'm saying sure you know if, if you got a whole bucket full of some bolt, then yeah, just take a torch and cut it off. But this bolt and that nut, if I reassemble this with these two parts, and I either add a lock washer or screw this on and tack it or whatever, I'm not going to have a problem with that. That's going to work. And, you know, when I worked in the drilling industry... When I was out on a rig with my torches, you know, if the hands were struggling with a bolt, they'd say, oh, cut that bolt off. Well, sure, they'd say cut that bolt off. Because for one thing, that meant I had to remove it and not them. That's less for them to do. And for the other thing, the new bolt that went in it is not a bolt that they would have to pay for. So, of course, you know, they're like, yeah, just get another one. Uh, but anyway, I do want to, I do want to, go over how I would remove and recycle a bolt that's so tight that if you don't remove and recycle, you're basically going to cut off and waste. So let me set this up. Let me set this up. I think this will probably work. I'll give it a shot right here. People are going to say, oh, you heated that nut, you took the temper out of it. It's not as strong as it used to be. Maybe so. All I'm telling you is, I've recycled and reused nuts and bolts repeatedly, and I haven't had an issue.
On the elastic stop nuts though, definitely you're going to burn the elastic out of them. And you do have to watch elastic stop nuts because some of them are pretty low quality, pretty soft nuts. I don't think this one is. Way the impact socket acted against these makes me think these are pretty hard, pretty good material. But what's happening here is I'm actually, there's so much rust in there that that, that nut is rust welded to that bolt. It's pretty much what's happening. Uh, you, you have rust in between the threads of the nut and bolt, and that rust is expanded, and it's really a, a stuck kind of stuff. But when I heat this, when I heat this nut up, that nut is expanding considerably. It's getting bigger. When it gets bigger. It's going to release. It's going to release itself. This is where you go when, uh, you know, some penetrating oil, edge red or whatever, won't, won't bring it loose. Let me grab some pliers. So obviously that's going to be too hot for me to touch. And when you do this, you might see some damaged threads. This one's not really damaged, but you might see some damaged threads. Uh, you just need to look at it. And if you see damaged threads, you know, back here where it was when it was tight, you could add washers and get back to better threads. That's one thing you could do, but if your threads throughout the entire bolt are damaged, then it's no good. Both of these nuts and bolts, as far as I'm concerned, are fine. This next part of this, I got the bolt in the vise, I started the nut on it straight. I'm gonna put some oil on there. That's burnt motor oil out of the crankcase of a vehicle, used oil. Use my little 3 8 cordless, it's handy.
We'll run that a couple times. Those threads are completely fixed. Run that with your fingers now. Nothing to it. That's not fighting me at all. Can't get it to focus that great, but there you go. Good to go. Got everything loose and cleaned up that goes on the new one off the old one we're gonna put put that stuff in position and tack it up All welded up. I'm going to put some primer here on the end, on the inside of here. Then I'll put that hitch back on. Prime the rest of it. You sure are beautiful today, Miss Diane. Because you've been doing a lot of beauty sleeping in there. All that beauty sleep you got, you're the most beautiful little princess. Ever. Miss Princess Diane is looking around, enjoying her day. She's had plenty of nap time today. She's in there sleeping on a pillow. You got the primer on this thing. This thing's done. I'm gonna set it out of the way. Let my buddy know I'm done with it. What'd you make, Miss Girl? 
You like it? That's all for this one.